All right, now, if you hear music in the background, and I know that you do, do not own the rights to the music. I am not playing the music. I got nothing to do with the music. Music is being provided by the establishment. Once again, do not own the rights to the music. I am not playing the music. I got nothing to do with the music. Music is being provided by the establishment. All right. And that establishment is, everybody say it with me, Davido Hook Geneva in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, a.k.a. My happy place. Yeah. <laughs> What's good, family? Senor Cigar here. You are wherever you are. Hopefully, hopefully you're healthy and safe and all that. Now, this is the New York CNS Virtual Host Part 2 for this first day of October. But this video has nothing to do with cigars, even though I am indeed smoking a Jaime Garcia Reserva Especial Toro Gordo 6x60. And I am drinking a little Canada Dry, zero sugar, ginger ale in the fancy glass. And you know why. Here's to you. But this has nothing to do with cigars, but I just wanted to share something very close to me. Today, I am celebrating a very, very important to me, important day in my professional career. Today, I, I celebrate 45, four, five years working in radio. Uh, it has been an incredible journey. Um, I started in October of 1979 as the uh, second desk assistant hired for RKO Radio Network. And over the years, I have worked at several different places. But first of all, first I got to give uh, thanks to two people who are responsible. First, a woman by the name of Denise Richardson, who worked in the HR department at uh, RKO General which was the company that owned General Tire. They owned um, a lot of radio and television stations across the United States, including WOR-TV, WOR-AM, WOR-FM, which became WXLO, which became KISS FM. And they owned radio stations all across the country. They owned General Tire. They owned a company called Aerojet General, which means if, so, if, a, if a rocket went up in space, they made a few million bucks. Also, if you remember the uh, chain of RKO movie theaters, they own that big company. And I was uh, part of a program called the Explorers Program. I walked into Nisha's office one day and said, I need a job. I was in high school, but I needed a job. So she gave me my first job working in the mailroom at RKO General. And I got to see all the different aspects of the company. And I was already interested in radio. But after a while, um, I went to uh, one person and applied for a job as a desk assistant. And that person was Mr. Harvey Nagler. And hi he hired me, um, the second desk assistant hired for that company. RKO Radio Network was the company that got the very last interview with John Lennon, just hours before he died. And uh, man, that was a that was a crazy night when uh, when I got to work that night because I was working I was working the night shift at that time. 
So it was it was a crazy night. But, uh, and I want to thank Denise. I want to thank Harvey. Um, because without you guys, I wouldn't have gotten into the business. And then a couple of years later, um, I applied for a job as an engineer, a studio engineer working uh, in, in what we call a terminal room where you play back tapes and working in the studios where you, where you record programs and you edit programs for, for air. And, uh, the two men who are responsible, who are really responsible for my career as an engineer, Joe McGuire, who is the vice president of uh, engineering, and Dave Pollard, who was the uh, chief engineer. And without those two gentlemen, I wouldn't be where I am today. Always grateful to those two men, and also grateful to Denise and, and Harvey. And uh, so that's where my journey began. And going through the years, I've, I've worked, I have worked for pretty much every radio network, almost every radio network. I worked for ABC, NBC, CBS. I worked for a company called TalkNet, which was a division of NBC uh, radio. I worked for a company called Daynet. Um, there was a time when I was in between jobs and I was doing some freelance work and I worked for a guy named Howard Miller. And one of the jobs that I did for Howard Miller was I used to go set up the away team press booth at the Nassau Coliseum at the beginning of the basketball season. So I did that for like two or three years. Where I, would, I had to go to the Nassau Coliseum, go up to the press box, go up to the, the visitors press box and set it up. So that when they come in, they can set their equipment up, their microphones, their boards, or whatever, and did that for a couple of years. So thank you to Howard Miller. Uh, I have worked with the great and the near great <laughs> um, throughout my career. Um, I could give you a list of people that I have worked with over the years. The list is so long, and uh, you would know a lot of the names. You would, would, wouldn't know some of the names, but... Um, I am grateful to every single one of those people I've ever shared a studio with. I'm, I'm grateful to every single person uh, I have run a board for. Uh, probably the, my favorite achievement in my career was doing a live broadcast from the Museum of Television and Radio for a show that I did for nine years called New York Kids. And that's probably, I think I cherish that moment more than anything that I've done in the business. And uh, another special moment was uh, running the board for a talk show that I did for about a year and a half. Uh, I ran the board for former Governor Mario Cuomo, and uh, he was such a generous, nice person. Um, I enjoyed that year and a half very, very much. Unfortunately, uh, they had cutbacks at uh, the company I was working for. It was SW Networks, which was a division of Sony, and they had cutbacks, and I was... Uh, Last hired, first fired, so I had to go. But during my time there, I really had a great time working with uh, the governor. And I also worked on a show called um, Edge of Reality. It was talking about the paranormal and the host of that show, and you've heard this name, Ken Dashow, who now works at Q104. We did that for a little while. We, we did that uh, on Saturday nights. It was fun, that was a fun thing. But, um, and for the last almost 30 years, I have been a part of New York Public Radio, WNYC. And for 17 of those years, I was running the board for a program called All Things Considered. And uh, it's another one of my great joys to be able to, to run that show. 
And uh, to everybody over at WNYC who I, who I have worked with and who I work with now, thank you for uh, sharing a space with me and, and doing what we do every single day. Uh, I've been a part of that company since 1992. And uh, I have finally decided to hang it up. I am going to retire. After 45 years in the business, almost 30 at uh, WNYC, I'm hanging them up. And uh, I am going to retire uh, mid-January of next year. So now here's the part that is cigar related. You all know that I uh, like to do things to support the National Kidney Foundation. If, if you don't know, I'm going to tell you now that 13 years ago I had a kidney transplant and I've been raising money ever since for the National Kidney Foundation. I am planning a senior cigar retirement cigar crawl. Details to follow. Uh, since my birthday is in January, I don't know if I'm going to do it in January because the weather is kind of iffy. I might just wait until like March, April when the weather gets better, but there will be a senior cigar retirement cigar crawl. And what we'll do is we'll go to several different cigar shops over, over a bunch of days that I have that I have been a part of uh, one way or the other over the years and ask you to, number one, bless the house, and number two, make a donation to the National Kidney Foundation. So when all that comes about, I will let everybody know. But family... Uh, I just wanted to get that out there, put that out there, tell my story. And uh, so now I'm going to finish this fine tobacco product, this uh, Jaime Garcia Reserva Especial Toro Gordo. And uh, I'm going to watch the Mets try to win a wild card game. The family, y'all know, y'all know. Love you. Like a fat kid loves cake. Please don't forget. Check in on the elders, your family, your family and friends who live alone. They need to hear from you. They need to know that they're not alone. They need to know that someone loves them. They need to know that together we're getting through all of this. And yes, we are getting through all this. Hashtag support mom and pop shops. Hashtag support small business. And if you are indeed going out somewhere tonight or any night moving forward, make sure you've got that plan. Stay safe and stay healthy so you can stay alive. All right, so that's it. That is all I got. I am that man from your cigar. Enjoy my fine tobacco product. Pop in my collar because I can. And celebrating 45 years of gainful employment. And at some point, I do hope we'll be able to put some smoke in the air. You know, it's all about the work. And I tried to put it in. So now I'm going to toast myself. Closest thing to champagne I'm going to get is this... Uh, zero sugar ginger ale but if you can put some smoke in the air for me today toast me up today if you don't mind all right and uh at some point i do hope to talk to you again real soon but in the meantime how if you hear me Yeah, baby.